These are notes on calculating surface area. Surface area of a figure is if you were to unfold it into a two-dimensional net and find the area of each piece, or you could find the area of each face and add it up. As a quick review, you need to use the four-step process, especially when you're finding the surface area of a rectangular prism. Step one, you're always going to write the formula that you're using. Step two, you're only going to plug in the measurements. Step three, you'll do the calculations. And step four, you'll check your units. The formula for surface area of a rectangular prism is two times the length times the height plus two times the height times the width plus two times the width times the length. And your surface area, whether it's regular area or surface area, you will always use square units. Okay, first example, calculate the surface area of the prism. We're using the same formula as before, two times length times height plus two times height times width plus two times width times length. So step one is just writing the formula. Step two, we're going to plug in all of the measurements. Now I would suggest that you label length, width, and height on your figure. That way when you're substituting in the measurements, you don't get anything mixed up. So three inches will be the height. The width will label as four, since four is smaller than five. And the length is five inches. You will typically see a cursive L to represent the length so that it's not confused with the number one. All right, so I have two times length of five times height of three plus two times height of three times width of four plus two times four times five. Now on step three, this is where I'll start doing the computations. And it might take a few extra lines, especially since our formula is getting a little bit more complex, and that's okay. So we have two times five times three, which is the same as two times 15, which is 30. Two times three is six, times four is 24. And two times four times five is the same as two times 20, which is 40. And now I can continue. 30 plus 24 is 54. And 54 plus 40 is 94. So then on 94, I need to have units of inches squared. And that is step four. So uh, surface area is equal to 94 inches squared. Okay, next, this time we have a triangular prism. Now this one, it is okay if we break it into each of the faces instead of just using the formula. If you're comfortable using the formula, go ahead and do that, but it might make a little bit more sense if we lay it out. So to start, we have two identical triangles. And we know that the formula for a triangle is base times height divided by two. So this has a height of four. I always need to make sure that I use the base and the height as the two sides that form the 90 degree angle. Okay, so area of the triangle is three times four divided by two. Now I have a front piece and I have this back piece right here, and those are exactly the same. So whatever I get for the front, I can multiply it by two to get the back side. Okay. Then I'm going to add in each of the three lateral faces. Those are the faces that go around the outside of the figure. Try to color code those. So the first face I have is this side. And that is a quadrilateral with dimensions of four and five. So area of a rectangle is just base times height. So it can be over five times four. Okay, my next side, I can do the face that it is resting on. We'll do that in green. And that's a 
rectangle with measurements of three and five. So three and five. And the final face is this diagonal line right here. And that one is going to have dimensions of five and five. So five times five. Now if you look this formula up online, it might label each of the additional sides as A, B, C. Um, and that's fine if you want to do that, but this one makes a little bit more sense to break it up piece by piece. Okay, so step two is done, and now I can start doing my computation. So this expression, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 times 2 is 12. Plus, 5 times 4 is 20. Plus, 3 times 5 is 15. And 5 times 4 is 25. So now I'm just finding the sum of these numbers. And so the same thing equals. Okay, if it's helpful, you can line these up off to the side and add them up. So we get a surface area of 72. That's step three. And step four is to put units on. So that would be centimeters squared because area will always be units squared. Okay, next example, you have 200 square inches of wrapping paper and you want to wrap a box. It has a height of six inches and it might be helpful to label these. So height is six inches. It has a width of 12 inches and a length of 12 inches. So the base is a perfect square. So width is 12 inches, length is 12 inches. Okay, we're going to calculate the surface area and then determine whether or not we have enough wrapping paper. So we can use the formula that we started off with. And that was 2 times length times height plus 2 times height times width plus 2 times width times length. So step 1 is complete. Step 2, we're going to plug in everything that we know. So this area equals 2 times 12 times 6 plus 2 times 6 times 12 plus 2 times 12 times 12. Okay, step 3, now we're going to do all of the computation. I could reorder it and do 6 times 2, which is 12, and 12 times 12 is 144. For this part, I could again do 12 times 12, which is 144. And this part is 12 times 12 times 2. So that would be 288. Okay, continue on all of those up. You can already see that we have way more surface area than wrapping paper, but we still need an answer. surface area of 576 and the last step is to put units so inches squared. Now if we really want to answer this question completely we would find the difference of what we have and what we want to wrap. So if I did 576 and subtracted 200 from that um, I could say no, I don't have enough wrapping paper, and I am short by 376 square inches. So as a quick overview, if you are finding surface area of a rectangular prism, I do want you to use the formula. If you're finding surface area of a triangular prism, or maybe a trapezoidal prism, then I would be okay with you breaking it apart, just as long as you show which piece came from which part of it.